Welcome to the Nicholas 11X12 technology. Today we're looking at the brand new Intel Core i3-3220 Ivy Bridge Dual Core Processor. This is the lowest model of the 3rd generation Core i3 CPUs. This product was provided by Forticus. Thank you. But now let's move on to the box. Again we're looking at an Intel Core i3 processor and this is the i3-3220 model obviously and this CPU uses the LG-1155 socket just like every other Ivy Bridge CPU does. On this side you basically get some details on the special features and this processor also features the Intel HD Graphics 2500, not HD 4000 unfortunately. On the back of the box is a description in different languages. Here on this side you get to see some specifications like the model number, clock speed, cache, socket and TDP. And on the top is the CPU itself inside the box. But now let's open that box up and see what's inside. Alright, that's what you get, the standard package as always. Here are the Intel Core i3 installation instructions and on the back is the Core i3 sticker. And to cool down the unit Intel of course also includes a stock cooler, which as always is fairly small. Thermal paste is reapplied already. The fan uses a 4 pin fan connector by the way. But I guess now we should get to the processor itself. Here it is in this plastic case, I'll quickly open it up and there we go, here's the shiny processor. It looks good, but to be honest almost every single CPU looks good to me. For this review I'll be installing the CPU and the MSI Z77A-GD65 motherboard which I already reviewed before. To cool this processor down I didn't go with the stock cooler, instead I went with the Cooler Master V6GT aftermarket CPU cooler. But now to the specifications. The Intel Core i3-3220 is a dual core Ivy Bridge processor with a base clock of 3.3GHz. It comes with the integrated Intel HD Graphics 2500 graphics, has a TDP of 55 watts, and uses the U22 nanometer architecture. It offers 512KB level 2 cache and 3MB of level 3 cache. Dual channel DDR3 1600 memory is also supported. In CPU-C the processor gets detected without any problems, but up here it says we're looking at a Core i5-3550 and so does the logo on the right. But again, this is the Core i3-3220 CPU like it says down here. This will probably be fixed in the future CPU-C versions. But yeah, this is an Ivy Bridge CPU that is running in the LGA-1155 socket just like Sandy Bridge and the TDP got lower. We went from 65 watts to 55 watts, so that definitely seems to be an improvement here compared with the older Sandy Bridge CPUs. The new 22 nanometer technology is of course used and the voltage is fairly low, although it's a little higher than on the previous generation Sandy Bridge CPUs. The latest instructions are supported and on idle the CPU is running at 1.6 GHz to save energy. That's very nice and once you need more power, it'll go all the way up to 3.3 GHz. There's no turbo boost technology featured on the CPU. And as for overclocking, well, you could overclock but it's limited. It has a locked multiplier and therefore you will not be able to go as high as with a K-series processor. Here's the cache, good amount for the price. And this CPU has 2 cores and 4 threads. So hyperthreading is supported here. The 4 threads will basically act like 4 real cores while being virtual ones. I installed this unit in the MSI Z77A-GD65 motherboard and at the time of this video the latest BIOS version is installed. As for the memory I got 8GB of DDR3 2000MHz RAM installed and it's really great that you can run such high frequency memory modules with the CPU at this price point. The memory controller definitely improved and now allows more variants of frequencies which is great. With the Sandy Bridge CPU I could only get RAM up to 1866MHz instead of the 2000MHz and nothing was overclocked. But now let's move on to the benchmarks, this is my test system. As always I'll start with 3D Mark Vantage at the performance preset. The result is 11622 which is really high for a dual core CPU. Gaming shouldn't be a problem according to the score, although there isn't really that much of a difference compared to the previous generation core i3 CPUs. The score is really good but I honestly thought I'd get to see 12500 or so, but 11600 are good too. But how will it perform in 3D Mark 11 at a performance preset? Well, the system scored respective P5053 which is pretty good. I have nothing to complain here. It really looks like gaming should work very very well with this CPU. And you always have to consider the price. In Cinebench release 11.5 I got a CPU score of 3.33 points. It's not that bad, but I was a little disappointed here. But what do you want for that price? This is a dual core, not a quad core. 
so this CPU doesn't show its strength with rendering, but still, it's not bad at all. Now in 8064 cache and memory benchmark I get some really nice results. The memory results just look outstanding for a processor at this price point. Really, just perfect, it's almost as good as a Core i7 CPU on a memory controller. But even the cache results are pretty good and overall the transfer rates are really fast. As you can see the processor clocked at 3.3 GHz while running through this test. In SuperPi I'll now let the CPU calculate 1 million digits of Pi. And it's done in just 11.490 seconds, which is really really fast for a price. I can't complain at all, that was a nice surprise here. Can I get another surprise with W Prime? Well, I will let the CPU calculate 32 million integers across all available cores. And well, I get 15.991 seconds, that is not a surprise actually, but it's a good result, just fairly, well, you know, average. But will I get average results when testing out some games like Dirt Showdown? I'm running this at 1680 by 1050 on ultra settings with 8 times MSAA. On the minimum I get 39 FPS, while the average frame rate is 52 FPS. So you will agree with me, that's good for ultra settings. How about Battlefield 3? It's also running on ultra settings but the MSAA is turned off and the AF is lowered to 1x. On minimum I get 59 FPS, 82 FPS on average and 111 FPS at max. So these definitely are superb results, although you have to consider these are more GPU demanding games but that's all I have right now. But yeah, gaming works out perfectly even at the slower price point. Another thing I should show you is the integrated graphics performance. Here in GPU-Z you can see some specifications of it. It's fairly basic, nothing new, you also had these graphics on Sandy Bridge CPUs. Unfortunately Intel did not include the better HD 4000 graphics, but even this Intel HD 2500 graphics should do the basic stuff. And to show you how the performance would look like, I'll start with 30 mark Vantage at the performance preset. As you can see the GPU score is fairly low and we're talking of 1426. Gaming will be difficult, I can already tell you that. But to show you more, I'll run some games for you like Dirt Showdown at 1280 by 800 on ultra low settings. The MSAA is also turned off. On minimum I get 20 FPS, while on average it doesn't even look too bad with 34 FPS. If you'd lower the screen resolution even further, you would soon get playable frame rates. This unfortunately will not help in a game Battlefield 3. This is a very GPU demanding game. I'm running it at 800 by 600 on low settings with MSAA disabled, AF set to 1x and the ambient occlusion is of course off. On minimum I get 10 FPS, 14 FPS on average and just 20 FPS at max, so that's definitely unplayable. You could try lowering the resolution a bit, but it won't make the game playable. And now to the temperatures. On idle I get 25 degrees celsius which are 77 degrees fahrenheit, while on low the temperature goes all the way up to 44 degrees celsius which are 111 degrees fahrenheit. But really 44 degrees is very low, although you must know I'm cooling this CPU down with the Cooler Master V6 GT aftermarket CPU cooler. So yes, you would normally use the star cooler and so the temperatures would of course get higher, but hey, if it reached up to 60 degrees celsius with the star cooler, no problem, it would still be fine. I consider this as cool. The ambient room temperature was at 21 degrees celsius by the way, which are 70 degrees fahrenheit. Now to the final test, the power consumption. On idle, the CPU with the HD7850 consume only 61 watts, that's not much, in fact that can be considered as low. Now when I totally stress the CPU out, so on load, the CPU with the HD7850 draw only 85 to 86 watts. That's incredible, I mean wow that's a really low power consumption for a CPU that's running on full load. Good job there Intel. Now when I remove the HD7850 and enable the iGPU instead, the CPU on idle draws only 51 to 52 watts, that's pretty good. And now the iGPU on load, I'm testing the integrated graphics now on full load. That's amazing, the power consumption only goes up to like 68 to 69 watts. So really, the offered performance compared to the power consumption is just amazing. Still, Intel managed to increase the performance and lower the power draw by far. That's amazing, we're only talking of a TDP of 55 watts now. 65 watts was good, but now 55. Incredible. The Intel Core i3-3220 Ivy Birch processor is a great great choice for people that are in a budget but want a CPU that can pretty much do anything you throw at it. Of course you can never expect performance like you would see on Core i5 or i7 processors, but it's good that it can even keep up with these. It can run programs and games just fine, especially gaming, it's almost as good as a Core i5 processor, that's absolutely amazing. 
So for gamers, well, this is a perfect budget CPU that will run just any game you throw at it. High frequency memory is also supported and this at this price point. Now, when also considering the power consumption, can there be said anything negative besides the fact that it has a locked multiplier? No, I don't think so. Pros are amazing price performance ratio, it plays games almost like a Core i5 slash i7 processor, it has an extremely low power consumption, very low temperatures and last but not least, this CPU also supports high frequency memory. The only negative point would be the CPU multiplier is locked. If it was unlocked, the CPU would just be a perfection. But still, I have to give the CPU a 10 out of 10 and would definitely recommend it. Again, thanks to Forticus for providing me this product. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.